Hey, all right, everybody. How's it going? Now, I got two stories here in front of me. Uh, so let's go through them and see what I think and see what you think. Um, so the first one, which came out a couple of days ago, is BMW is going to bring out a hydrogen fuel cell car in 2028. I think it says 2028 on here. So the headline is uh, major... BMW milestone. I don't know. I don't know why they're bigging this up so much. This is in um, Auto Express. It says the brand's first ever hydrogen production car announced, and it says BMW's first FCEV uh, fuel cell electric vehicle uh, will have a range possibly, possibly. <laughs> I don't know why they got possibly on it. A range possibly as high as 485 miles. Now, there's another bit by here that sort of struck me as a, a little bit strange. And it seems like Auto Express seems excited, or the person who wrote this seems excited about this because they wrote uh, the highly anticipated... I said that wrong then, so I'll say it again. <laughs> the highly anticipated new model is to go on sale by 2028. So, hands up, who's highly anticipating this fuel cell car? N not me, I don't know. Uh, who, who, who is getting excited about this car? I don't know who's getting excited about it because, um, now, uh, also it says by here, it says it's a collaboration between BMW and Toyota. Now, how well has Toyota's fuel cell cars been going? <laughs> how well have they gone they haven't gone very well at all have they they're not selling hardly any um you can't fuel them up and if you do fuel them up it's expensive to fuel them up the car's expensive in the first place it's not as efficient as an ev with a battery so it's just it's rubbish it's so rubbish now why are they doing this why why is bmw making a fuel cell electric vehicle how much is it going to cost does it say anything about the, the cost um, it says BMW's first hydrogen production car is confirmed to be a variant of an existing model but it will be powered by Toyota's forthcoming third generation hydrogen fuel cell technology which is set to hit production sometime between 2026 and 2027 now by 2026 or 2027 or 2028 for BMW electric cars are moving at quite a pace and the technology is getting better and better now MG have said that they're gonna they're gonna have a high-end car um, by next year with solid-state batteries that's what they've stated I don't know how true that is but they said in 2025 in the second quarter of 2025 they love in small numbers it's in small numbers it's not in, in mass production they love a solid state battery car. So does that, does that mean by 2028 there'll be more? I don't know, I don't know. But putting solid state batteries to one side, there's other batteries that are coming out as well. And it's all getting so much better. So who would want a hydrogen car? I, I, I don't know. I just don't know who, who's going to buy these hydrogen cars. Is it just, uh, is, are they just doing it to slow down people buying battery electric cars i don't know i don't know did i say anything else about it in here which is worth mentioning uh, i don't think it's worth mentioning hang about wait a minute wait a minute right i lost my train of thought for a second day um now it says by here uh is a bit further down in the article and it says however in order to refuel there must be the infrastructure to do so toyota has previously praised the eu for its long-term confidence in FC EV uh, technology after it was announced that by 2031 hydrogen fueling stations would be installed at least every 200 kilometers uh, to further strengthen the network BMW and Toyota are also set to invest heavily in hydrogen infrastructure and work with the companies involved in crucial places like the UK in which hydrogen infrastructure is severely lacking. So it looks like they're going to build hydrogen fuel cell cars and then sell you hydrogen <laughs> um, 
probably at a price which is extortionate, I would imagine. Now, some people will still be crying out for hydrogen fuel cell cars, and the people who make the most noise about buying hydrogen fuel cell cars are the ones who never buy one. They never buy one. They say hydrogen is the future, it's the way forward, but they've never bought a hydrogen fuel cell car. So I don't know. So with that being said, I I just can't see it. With the, the battery technologies getting better and better, I can't see a mass market for it. I can't. I might be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know. I am with a crystal ball. But anyway, uh, I think it does say at the end of here, at the end of this article, do you think hydrogen fuel cells cars are the future? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. And nobody has commented. <laughs> There's zero comments. So there we go. I think that says it all, doesn't it? Now, the other article by Hugh is it's a hit piece on electric cars again. Now, this is from the Telegraph. And this is a little bit more nuanced, a little bit more, uh, well, I can't think of the right word. It's a little bit better than the Daily Fail article. With the, it's the same article, but the Daily Fail put their little extra spin on it to make it a little bit worse. And if you go on the Daily Fail's webpage and you scroll down to the comment section, it, it must be where all the stupid numbskulls go to comment because the comments are the most balmiest, stupidest things I've ever seen in my life. They're even worse than Facebook comments. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Why does the Daily Mail attract these kind of people? I don't know. Anyway, I don't want to give too much... Uh, you know, focus on the Daily Mail because the Daily Fail is a load of rubbish. Anyway, and this article is a load of rubbish as well. Well, I say it's a load of rubbish. There is truth in the article, but it's a hit piece on electric cars again. Oh, and one of the one of the comments in the Daily Fail one, if you if you do bother to go and look at it, um, is what about the brakes? The brakes are going to cause more brake dust and stuff for electric cars. Obviously, they don't know about electric cars. They don't know about regen braking. Anyway, let's have a look at this article by here. I'm waffling now. Electric vehicles contribute more to river pollution, says Environment Agency Chief. Okay, so if we scroll down and we have a look, the name of the person in question is Alan Lovell. And he said, road runoff from tyres water containing pollution that runs off the tarmac had a significant negative impact on pollution in the UK's waterways. Now, before I go into this article, I just want to point out a little teeny thing that's wrong with this article. Because um, it says electric vehicles can contribute more to pollution in rivers than any other cars. But the problem with that is, is that the amount of electric cars on the road compared to ice cars is a lot less. It's a lot, lot less. It's a lot less, Alan Lovell. No, no, I'm not blaming Alan Lovell because he probably said something and then the newspapers twisted to suit the anti-EV narrative, don't they? Um, so I'm not denying that electric cars can be higher than, uh, you know, petrol cars. You know, in, in certain cases they're not, but in certain cases they are. But it's a little bit weird how Alan Lovell hasn't said these big Range Rovers uh, cause more to river pollution. Where, where is that in the article? It's not there. It's not there. It's just electric cars. No, you might have mentioned that. If I could find his original quote, it might be slightly different. You know, these articles, they can leave stuff out, they can add stuff in, and then they can make a little disclaimer later on down the road, can't they? Now, it does say by here, it does go on a little bit more about, it says by here, people are worried about tyres now, and electric vehicles. Now, i got to point out something by here, that the people who complain about electric vehicles are the same pe people who think climate change is fake. OK, and they don't really care about pollution. So, oh, unless it's an electric car. They only care about pollution if it's an electric car. If it's, if it's a diesel car or a petrol car, they don't mind the pollution from them. It's only, they only become an environmentalist 
when it concerns an electric car. So, you know, and I, you know that's true. It is true. Um, so it says people are worried about tyres now. I don't know who's worried about tyres. Um, and it's ironic that the worse, they're worse because of the weight. No mention of, like I said, uh, Range Rovers, Land Rovers of any sort. No mention of that. No mention of vans. No mention of lorries. <laughs> Just electric cars. Um, so it says by her that the average weight of a petrol diesel car was 150 kilograms lighter than an electric car. But obviously, if you've got four large people in a petrol car and one little dude in a... In, no, sorry, I say that again. If you've got four heavy people in a petrol car and one little light guy in an electric car, then... There's no difference, is there? So, but I, I know what they're trying to say. I know what they're trying to say. Um, now, it does say by here, it does say a little bit later on, experts say that the impact of EVs will reduce as battery technology improvements mean cars steadily, steadily, stead in, steadily, <laughs> I can't say the word. <laughs> steadily get lighter and that the growing popularity of SUVs is cancelled out and the difference between petrol and diesel and electric cars. Uh, focusing just on tyre pollution ignores that electric vehicles are far better than combustion engines. Uh, cars, when it comes to air pollution overall, said Anna Kradinska. Is that a right name? I've, I, I don't know if I said that right. Kradinska from NGO Transport Environment. Switching from conventional internal combustion engine ice cars to EVs instantly eliminates all toxic tailpipe pollution such as nitrogen oxides, uh, particulates and carbon monoxide. Uh, she added that data suggests that while EVs may pollute slightly more from tyres, the increase is offset through lower pollution from the tailpipe and brakes. So there we go. So somebody sensible uh, in this article later on, you know, is stating that Overall, electric cars are better. Um, but if you look at the Daily Fail article, it's, it's basically saying electric cars are the devil's work. And when you go down to the comment section, it's bizarre. It's just crazy. It's nuts. Um, so there we go. That's my little rant for the day. <laughs> it I might not make much sense, but there we go. That's my ramblings and that's my rant for the day. If you did like my ramblings and rant for the day, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Ahoy!